Hello mate and welcome back to another exciting DAS Studio video. In this episode we're going to talk about five ways that you can fix your renders and make them better today. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So a lot of people get very confused when it comes to DAS Studio. You often hear people using their lack of GPU or the fact that their GPU is not very good as an excuse for poor renders. And we need to be very clear about this. Your GPU does not affect the quality of your renders. It only affects the speed at which they get done. If you have a GTX 960, you can do the same render that you can do on an RTX 3080. It's just going to take you about four or five times as long. However, if you take pride in your work and you want your images to look good, then that won't put you off put making your renders decent. So how can we actually improve our renders? So number five in this list is quite simple, slow down. Rushing things means you're more likely to miss details like poke through or mistakes in poses. There is no such thing as fast 3D CG. Even the massive movie studios like Disney or Pixar, um, even the big AAA game developers, it takes them months with an army of employees to put together a few seconds of animated video and all you're doing is still images. So. If you're trying to rush through and push out 30 renders in a week because you've got a deadline to meet because you've overpromised to your patrons or you're just, you know, trying to rush through to get it done quicker, the only piece of advice I can give to you on this one is stop, take your time and deal with everything. Make sure you get it just right before you press the render button because there's nothing annoying more annoying than getting an hour into a render only to find out that there's a glaring error that you're going to have to fix so or start your render again. On that 5B, I would say plan ahead. Think about what your render is going to look like at the end and make sure that you plan for that. Make sure you understand what resources you're going to use. Um, this will help you wasting too much time during setup because you already know exactly where you're going to go in your content library and you have a kind of idea of what your image is going to look like rather than fudging it spending 20 minutes just moving the camera around and um, wasting time. The irony of course is that the people who rush tend to be the people whose processor takes four hours to do a render. So if you think about it, if it's going to take you four hours to do a render, what difference does it make if you spend five more minutes planning your renders and taking your time making sure everything's right before you press the button. Number four, optimize your scenes hide anything that doesn't need to be in the scene and make sure that you aren't using unnecessary subdivisions on your characters if you're doing a close-up of one of your characters faces then it makes sense to have your subdivision level set at four or five but if they are doing a full length shot you can see them so they're only going to be seen from a distance away there's absolutely no need to have them that detailed you can afford to drop it down to maybe one or two levels of subdivision that way you're saving on geometry memory and giving your GPU a fighting chance of being able to work through the render quickly. Also, it just makes it a lot simpler to work with in your workspace because if you're like me, you tend to forget what um, settings you've chosen for your um, subdivision levels and you end up trying to work around a really jerky interface. Whereas if you drop the sub D levels down, then it makes things speed up. Also, it just means that there's more of a chance that your GPU isn't going to be overwhelmed with too much information and you're not going to hit CPU fallback because if you think your GPU is slow, try rendering on CPU alone. That really is slow. Number three, post-production. If you don't do it, you're missing out on 50% of the process. I've had this argument with many people online before, but my opinion remains unchanged. Every AAA developer and marketing company and professional commercial photographer does post work on their images no matter how much they claim they do not. Retouching is quite simply part of the process. Think about it like this. It's a bit like skipping leg day. If you see someone who goes to the gym from far away, you can see they train their chest and their biceps and they look great from, from far away, but the closer you get to them, you more realize they're not doing leg day and they're not training their back muscles. All they've got is pectorals and biceps and they've got nothing else. They're only doing half the job. It's exactly the same with your renders. 
just pumping things out of Dash Studio and sticking them straight into a PC game is a shortcut to making yourself look amateurish. Just take a little bit of time. By the time you've done 20 or 30 renders in post, you're gonna have that process down to about five or 10 minutes. And it also means that you can fix any glaring errors such as poke through or black lines on the forehead simply by using the tools that are available in whichever image editing application you tend to be using. Either way, post-production is a vitally important and necessary part of the process. You can make up all the rationale and excuses you like about not doing it, but if you don't, it simply boils down to laziness. It also speeds up your workflow because something that will add another 20 or 30 minutes to your render time could be something that takes a few seconds to add in post-production. So again, one of those things, God Rays are a prime example. They add a huge amount of time to your render times, but you can put them in in post and it takes seconds. Composition. I would strongly recommend that you take your time and watch some of the videos that I've done on the subject and that watch some photography channels as well. Something that comes up all the time is composition. You can have the nicest looking models in the world, but if your composition is garbage, then the images are going to look like crap. Taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that you're shooting from the right place with the right angle and that the, the subject is in the correct position in the screen can make a huge amount of difference to a really simple image. If there's a lot of dead space, it doesn't matter as long as your image is drawing the character, you're drawing the viewer's eye to the place where you want it to be. Composition is a hugely important part of your rendering. And for the sake of spending 20 or 30 minutes just watching a few videos to give you some ideas of how best to compose your shots, it seems like that's a really simple way and a really effective way of fixing your renders. Number one, not necessarily the most important thing, but certainly the most important thing as far as Dash Studio is concerned with learning to light your scenes properly. Making sure that there's some light for Dash Studio to work with even in dark areas and using the lighting to highlight the parts of the scene that you want the viewer to look at. And it can certainly can't hurt to put some nice highlights and things like that into your images. If Dash Studio doesn't have enough or any light to work with, it's going to slow down your render times dramatically. So this is not just a tip for making your images look better, but it's also a tip for speeding up your renders. You don't necessarily have to light all the areas to the extent where all of your images look like they're HDRs, but you certainly need to give Dash Studio a fighting chance of being able to calculate where the light beams are coming from and the difference between the light and the shadow. If everything is in shadow, then your image is gonna look grainy as hell and it may never finish. Grain in images is tolerable up to a certain point, but if you're releasing a game where all the images are very grainy, then it's just making you look more amateurish. It's the same as if you go onto the Dash Studio store and you see a product for a indoor scene or something like that and the production images that are being used to promote the product are grainy as hell and you think well if the person who made the product can't even be bothered to light their scenes properly then why should i pay them the 20 30 40 dollars for their product in the end anyway so that about wraps it up guys i hope you found those tips useful i know we sort of rattled through it nice and quickly but these really are simple tips and ways that you can improve your productivity and make your images look a whole lot better with very very little effort so let me know if you found that useful hopefully i'll see some comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye